Hello students, in this video we're going to solve a homogeneous linear system of ODEs. In this case, we will have repeated eigenvalues, so we're going to get a generalized eigenvector. The assumption is that you know how to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix, and in this particular case, you know what to do when you have repeated eigenvalues and you know how to find a generalized eigenvector. I'll go through it rather quickly in this video, but if you don't know how to do that, I suggest that you consult your text or another video from my linear algebra playlist where I go through how to find generalized eigenvectors. Okay, let's begin. So we have this ODE, system of ODE, sorry, and I'm going to write this as a matrix equation. So x dot corresponds to dy, dx dt, y dot corresponds to dy dt, then I just pick off the coefficients 3 minus 18, 2 minus 9, and then we have the vector x y. So I'm using the dot to signify the differentiation with respect to t. I'm going to pick x as my vector letter. Um, sometimes you'll see y is chosen, but um, anyways, this is the vector x, not the component x. This is the vector x dot is equal to this matrix, and then the vector x has components x, y. Sometimes you'll see this as I'm repeating y dot, where y corresponds to the components x, y, okay? Um, but this is a capital X and this is a vector. It's not, one, it's not this component x. Anyhow, let's go through finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. So A is the matrix, 3 minus 18, 2 minus 9. So I read them off by row. When I go about finding the eigenvalues, I see that I get a repeated eigenvalue, minus 3, <clears throat> minus 3. So lambda equals minus 3 is the eigenvalue. And the corresponding eigenvector is 3, 1. I'm assuming, again, that you know how to do that. So <clears throat> you know that your solution is going to look something like this. It's going to look like x is equal to c1 times x1, where x1, the vector x1, is the eigenvector times e to the eigenvalue times t. So your solution starts to look like what I have written down here, x is equal to c1, then the eigenvector 3, 1, e to the minus 3t, where minus 3 is the eigenvalue. But there's more to the story here. There's more to the solution. We need to find the generalized eigenvector. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to put the eigenvector that I found on the right-hand side, and I'm going to find this generalized eigenvector. because I'm going to, I'll explain this in a minute, but um, the reason that this is, you can go back and look at another video of mine where I go through this process, but we're chaining um, another generalized eigenvector onto this one. Anyhow, this is um, what the a minus lambda i will look like. If you're wondering where does the 6 and the minus 6 come from, remember that this is a minus lambda i, so this is going to be 3 minus a minus 3, where the minus 3 is the eigenvalue. So 3 minus minus 3 is 3 plus 3, which is 6, and minus 9 minus minus 3 is minus 9 plus 3, which gives us minus 6. Sorry, I had to pause there. I had to think about getting the signs correct. So minus, three plus, uh, minus 9 plus 3 is minus 6. All right, and then we're going to solve the system. Typically, you can just ignore the bottom row and just solve the top row. But if you wanted to do the row operations or use Kramer's rule, but you couldn't use Kramer's rule because you would get 0 for the determinant. So you could just do the row operations and you get something, a matrix system that looks something like this. If we divided everything by 6, you'd have 1 minus 3 and 1 half here, which is perfectly valid. I'm just going to leave it with my pivot entry being 6. So I have 6w1 minus 18w2. Remember that this column corresponds to w1, this column corresponds to w2 is equal to 3. And then if I move the 18 over, minus 18w2 over the other side, I have 3 plus 18w2. So when I divide by 6, 3 divided by 6 is 1 half plus 18 divided by 6 is 3, and so w1 is equal to 1 half plus 3w2, and then w2 is, of course, equal to w2. That's going to be my free variable, so I'll parameterize that with a t. And so I have w1, uh, w is equal to 1 half 0 plus 3 1, um, the parameter t in this case. Now, the generalized eigenvector I'm going to choose is going to be 1 half 0. 
I'm gonna let the parameter here be zero because I'm let this t here be zero because this three one this is the eigenvector that we found before and that and we expect that to be the case because if you take this equation apart you see that a w is equal to this chain of k plus lambda w. I'm gonna pick the one half zero to be my generalized eigenvector. Now you might when solving this system might have come across a different eigenvector and that's perfectly fine as long as it satisfies the system. Also valid, for example, is zero minus one sixth because if I multiply six times zero, I get zero. Minus 18 times minus one sixth is positive three or two times zero is zero. Minus six times minus one sixth is one. So you get three one. So it does, so zero minus one sixth does satisfy the system. Likewise, one, one, six satisfies the system, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So you can have many eigenvectors that satisfy this generalized eigenvector system. I'm gonna go with this solution. So let's add C2X2, okay? That's what we were expecting to happen because we have a second order system. So we're expecting a second solution x2 is now going to be kt times e to the lambda t plus w e to the lambda t. Remember from uh, your second order ODE theory when you had a dependent solution you would um, multiply it by the independent variable to get an independent solution. And so now if I plug these numbers in I get plus c2 and then the eigenvector t e to the minus 3t plus the generalized eigenvector times e to the minus 3t. Now you should consult with your instructor to find out what form of the solution you should be writing. Sometimes something like this is enough where you specify that x1 is 3, 1 e to the minus 3t and x2 is this vector here. Uh, other times your instructor may want you to write the solution this way. Other times they may want you to factor the e to the minus 3t out and then you can see yes this as t goes infinity this all this will start to decay down to zero and so on and so forth sometimes they will want you to write this out in component solution a component form where remember that the vector capital x was had components x y so if i distribute the c1 into here i get 3 c1 e to the minus 3t plus c2 oh but that's a 3 here so i get 3 c2 times t e to the minus 3t plus 1 half c2 e to the minus 3t. So I just used a distributive property for this top row and added the components together. And then the bottom row, I get y is equal to c1 e to the minus 3t plus then c2 e to the minus 3t times 1 with a t. And then there's 0 here, so there's no term here. So here's a couple different forms of the solution. There are many forms. Here are two possible ones. If you had a different generalized eigenvector, you would get a slightly different solution because this vector would be different. This vector would be the same, 3, 1, but this vector would be different. All right, good luck.